So welcome back to Peter's Railway. Uh, today I thought rather than having a steam up with Bongo, we would have a look at the history of this little farm railway. Uh, so it was originally built back in, of course, the late 1960s, early 1970s by Gerald Izard, and it ran across the field. And originally it was a little up and down line, so it stopped up at the top here. You can see the little platform that was there with the, some old track sitting on it. Um, but by the time that I moved down here in 2019, the track was completely derelict. You couldn't walk down it because the uh, plants and grass had grown right over it. And more to the point, this tree had uh, fallen down in a gale and it had demolished a set of points here and it had also demolished the roof of the engine shed. So apart from rebuilding the engine shed, which I had to do, uh, my first real project was building this turning loop that runs around the top of the engine shed. And uh, there's one at the other end of the line now, so you've got a continuous run uh, up and down the main line and then round the loops at the end. Uh, but going back in history a bit, uh, originally there was a set of points here which got broken by the tree and they ran down the path to Gerald's original workshop. So I think we'll go and have a little look down there. So this path follows the line where the track used to go uh, until we meet where the turning loop cut it off. So this is the last bit of track that's left now where it ran into the workshop through the cat flap there. But I think we should go and have a look in the workshop and see what's still there. Oh my goodness, I haven't been in here for years. And this is Invicta. So Gerald finished Invicta in about 1985, I would think, and he didn't just build the engine, he also cast the wheels himself. So I've just found down here, uh, that's the pattern uh, for making the wheels. It's a wooden pattern, and then he would have made a sand casting or a sand mould uh, and poured metal into it. And the metal came from uh, smashing up old bits of combine harvest of pulleys and cog wheels with a sledgehammer and then uh, melting them in the crucible in his foundry. And I've got a picture here of the foundry as it was many years ago. And so uh, the, the foundry was uh, heated by coke, which was blown by Grandma Pat's old vacuum cleaner running in reverse. So really, this engine was built from scratch very much the way the engines were built uh, in the very old days. So it's been 10 years since this engine was last in steam, and so I think it'd be great fun to get it running again and give it a run on the line with the turning loops and uh, see how she goes. But before I do that, I've got to take it down to my other workshop and to pressure test the boiler to make certain it's safe. So that's the next thing, down to the other workshop. So before I test the boiler, I think it's such a filthy state, I need to do a little bit of cleaning up. So I've got some rags, I've got some paraffin, and uh, we'll try and get this uh, lovely uh, wooden cladding, which I think is probably mahogany, maybe made out of an old wardrobe. Let's see if we can get this to come up. This engine spits oil and uh, almost flames out of the chimney. And uh, so, oh my goodness, there's a brass boiler band under there. Um, and it probably has a bit too much oil from the oil pump. So uh, it does make a hell of a mess not only of itself, it also makes one hell of a mess of the driver. You come back after driving this knowing you've been driving a small steam engine. As you can see, I think that is a great improvement on where we were before. There's a wonderful patina uh, on the wood and uh, it actually looks like a museum piece of the sort you'd see in the Science Museum maybe now. Well, that was making quite a good job of the boiler, but really, I mean, the rest of it's so bad, I think I've had to bring it outside and we just have to use a paintbrush and just try to do this because it's just caked on old oil and bits of roof insulation. Ah, oh, the wheels are actually green. I've completely forgotten that. They haven't seen the light of day for many years. Bits of grass tangled up with it from many years of hurtling across the fields. So I better clean up the back head a bit, and uh, it's the easiest engine to get rid of the fire ever. I'll do that little nut. Take that off, take that off, and then we can just slide the entire grate out in one go. Ah, oh, I think I didn't clean that out after the last run. 
So I'll just use the airline to blow out what's left in the firebox. Ah. <coughs> So the original Invicta had a large single fire tube or furnace flue and uh, that would have gone all the way through to the front of the boiler and they were very inefficient. Uh, however, this model is slightly different because at this end, if you look, actually it, there's a nest of tubes here. So it is a multi-tubular boiler from about uh, halfway through the boiler. So this boiler actually makes a fair amount of steam. Uh, the original was always shy of steam and was not very successful, largely because of the boiler. So I'm just going to sweep these tubes, we'll give the boiler every chance of making enough steam for us because we've got a much longer line for it to run on than it ever had before. So I've got a blue brush, tube brush, blue brush, and what I'm going to do is we do it logically, so we do them all. This will considerably increase the heat transfer coefficient of these tubes. We regard the boiler tubes as being cleaned. That's the engine a bit tidied up. It's a bit nicer to work on now. I'm going to do a bit of work on the uh, smoke box because there's a bit of a, a gap in that. So I'll do a bit of that later on. Uh, but the main thing to do now is we want to pressure test the boiler. So I've got to fill it with water and pump it up. I know it's going to, there's going to be various leaks at various fittings and these. It's that sort of engine. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm just really testing that the boiler shell doesn't uh, fail. So uh, I've got to fill it with water first and then we can pump it up with a little pressure rig. Let's fill it up. We'll probably make a mess doing this. Oh, I'm making a mess. That was always going to happen, wasn't it? So the first thing I really want to do is to see uh, what pressure the safety valve lifts at. Uh, I think it lifts at 60. That's, I think, the pressure that it always ran at. But we'll find that out. So essentially, I should be able to pump up here now. So a little bit of pressure's going in. What I really want to see is, and the safety valve is going to weep a bit with water, but I want to see when it actually lifts properly. Perhaps I can catch up with all the leaks. 50. That's only weeping through. Ah, there we go. So that's now properly lifting now, and that is at... So it's lifting at about... about 100. OK, so that's interesting. We know that we need to pressure test then to one and a half times working pressure, which will be about 150 psi. It will be absolutely fine. So if I run up here to, we're pretty much 100 on the on the test gauge, and we're at 100 here. So that's okay. Uh, the the boiler is uh, at its working pressure of 100, and uh, we've got uh, 100 showing there. This gauge is working perfectly well. It doesn't actually go back to zero, but I don't mind about that. So uh, we know that the safety valve is going to lift at 100. That's working quite well. So to do the test now, what I've got to do is I've got to blank off the safety valve, remove that so that doesn't get damaged, and we'll pump it up to 150 and uh, just check that the, the shell is sound. There's going to be a few leaks around about the place, but they all take up with steam on this engine. And really, I'm just trying to ensure that the shell is not going to collapse on me. So we're at 50 PSI. Go up to 150, which is one and a half times working pressure. There's a few little drips. One pump at this stage goes quite far. And we've got my fantastically calibrated pressure gauge, which I did a video about earlier. So we're at one and a half times working pressure. Uh, we have got completely dry at the smoke box tube plate end. Uh, there's the odd little weep here around about some of the fittings, but that's neither here nor there. So I'm just checking inside the fire box. Yeah, that is completely dry in there. There's not a hint of any weeps. And um, so that's good. So I've kept the pressure up for 10 minutes now. Uh, so the boiler is strong enough to be steamed. That's a great piece of news. So I'll let the pressure out and then we move on to the next stage. So we're ready for a, a steam up now, really. Pressure test is done, the engine's all cleaned up. Uh, the regulator was a little bit jammed, but I just tapped down on that with a block of metal under there to free it, so that now runs beautifully. Uh, chimney has been polished. Uh, we now have a copper chimney, which is lovely. Um, the whole drill would laugh and say, of course, it wouldn't have been copper on the original, so all mucky and dirty was probably more appropriate, but uh, we now have an engine that is ready to go for a run, I think. So we're up at the engine shed for a steam test and see if the engine will run properly. Um, 
I've coupled up some water pipes from the tender to the engine. So I've got the pin here that couples the engine to the tender, and there's an absurd story with this little tiny piece of wire, because when the engine was fairly new, I was driving it, and I noticed that there was no split pin through that hole at the bottom there, and I said to Gerald, there's a slight risk that the pin will bounce out and the engine will take off without you, because you, you sit on the train behind. And he said, that's nonsense, Christopher, that will never happen. Anyway, literally the next trip, the pin bounced out and the engine took off, and I ran as fast as I could go, almost falling over to run, and I just managed to flick the regulator shut and save the, save the disaster. Anyway, so we will put the pin in, and it's a little keeper wire. Right, the pin's in, and now pull the keeper wire so we don't have a repeat of the disaster. So we've cleaned up the rest of the engine so beautifully, especially the chimney, I'd better do some of these pipes in the boiler van. So a good bit of brasso here. Right, just wipe off the stuff. Oh, that looks better, doesn't it? Do the old girl proud. So uh, it's time to light the fire. Open the fire hole door. Put some little bits of charcoal soaked in paraffin. Yeah, what I use as fire lighters here. Shove them in. Charcoal in the fire box. So, the moment of truth. Lit. Shove it in. Into light and then we want the little fan running. Turn on the fan. Hopefully the fan will work today. Something's happening. Water gauge is absolutely full. We've got plenty of water in there. So we've put plenty of charcoal in now uh, and get a bit of heat going with that. And the coal I've got is, is house coal. Um, this engine really doesn't make steam unless it's got a nice bit of flame going on. So using house coal, house coal flames rather easier than the anthracite. So we'll put a little bit of house coal in as well. And we've got a bit more charcoal. It's a very shallow firebox. This is not like a locomotive boiler. Um, it has got a nest of tubes from halfway through, but you don't have the same depth of fire that you've got in Bongo or Sam. Right, we'll have to let that burn through a little bit. We've got water in the tender. And... a warm chimney. Stone coal there still, but that's OK. Now it's a waiting game. So you might have guessed that this little railway is the inspiration behind all of my books. And here in The Forgotten Engine, we have got Invicta hurtling across the fields in the Great Railway Race. Anyway, back to raising steam in the original engine here. So the fire's getting going a bit now. Not hugely hot yet, but we'll leave it be. And, uh, oh yes, the safety valve's definitely getting hot. I can still touch it and hold my hand on there, but only just. So uh, the boiler is heating up. So we've got a little bit of steam pressure now, if I open the blow down valve from there. We're clearly in steam, we've got plenty of water in there, that's all right. Let's try now going onto the engine's own blower. And let's take this away. That, off, and try. We're on the engine's own blower now. Let's put some cold in again. Oh, there's some room for some coal now. We've definitely got a fire in there. Can't be very hot if you can stoke it with your fingers. We've got plenty of water in there. So it's time to push it out of the shed now. I don't know if we're going to have a successful run. There's a big leak back through this clack valve, but we may have to let steam go and sort that one out. But never mind, we'll see what happens outside. So we'll just push her back. We've got a little bit too much um, water in the boiler, but that's OK. It's up on the wagons on. Right. I have got here the original stick I made the very first day this engine steamed, because you can't really reach the regulator. So, um, the stick that I made in 1984 or 5 probably has been found, and 
uh, this engine has slip eccentric, so you don't have a reverse. So you move it a little bit in the direction you want to go, and then it should go in that direction is the idea. So I'll set the eccentrics. We've got plenty of water. We've got more than enough steam. Let's just see if I can reverse back a bit. I'm almost certainly going to get a shower of boiling water because there's really a bit too much water in the boiler. The Invicta moves under her own steam for the first time in about 10 years. With all the normal steam leaks and noises. Let's see if Invicta will move boards now. I'll just set the valves. Bit of steam. I'm going to blow past the uh, piston. So we have Invicta in steam, but more importantly that today, we have a guest star with us, Mark Eithard. Uh, so Mark is Gerald's son. So the plan for now is for Mark to have a drive of his father's engine for the first time in... How long do you think, Mark? Yeah, probably 15 years, I Yeah, think. something like that. So uh, I've known Mark since I was uh, 11 and Mark was 10. Mark runs all the farms around here now, so um, let's give it a go and see if we can get a run. Are you ready, Mark? I'm ready. Right, OK. So Mark Izard, first driver, father of locomotive in we don't know how long. Right, Mark, see what will happen. No breaks. Mission accomplished. Did you enjoy that, Mark? Very good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Memories of the farm railway uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, and your father's engine. Yeah, it uh, has gone surprisingly well. Yeah. Well, I'll do it for another run. I should go for another run. Since it's there, yeah. Right. Here we go. A good gentle run here, and then we'll build up speed to go up the bank. So this is the cutting where, many years ago, I had to run like the wind to catch the runaway train. And just out of the top of the picture is the spot where Gerald blew a tree stump out of the ground using explosives. He had a licence, so it was quite legal. However, after the explosion had gone off and sundry flints and bits of tree root had rained down from the sky, he was surprised to find that the stump had vanished without a trace. It wasn't until next summer that it turned up several hundred metres away in a field on the farm next door. I'm sorry I haven't made so many videos this year, but I have been very busy with the overhaul and repaint of the little tank engine, Sam. I've filmed the whole process, but now I've got to condense it down into a series of short, watchable stories. Anyway, watch this space, and if you'd like to subscribe, you'll hear about them as soon as they go live. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.